Rob. Thank you so much for joining us here today at Spark Media Conference 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wonderful to be it here. It is exciting to be here. Yes, and y'all, tell us who you're with, and you are a sponsor here at Spark Media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I work for John at Focus <laughs> on the Family. <laughs> I work for Rob at Focus <laughs> on the Family, <laughs> and together we're the evil masterminds behind a lot of what happens with our broadcasting and podcasting. Yeah, yeah, that is so great. Y'all have brought a lot of shows to market. Mm -hmm. Yes, and had a big influence in the podcasting faith world. Tell me a bit about how that got started and what your passion was and your thoughts were behind starting your podcast brand mm -hmm. and lane for mm -hmm. Focus on the Family. When, when podcasting first kind of became known within the industry, uh, the broadcast industry, we started placing our main show, the Focus on the Family broadcast, uh, up there through RSS feeds. Technically, that was our first, but our first creative effort for podcasting came about, I think it was 2007. Yeah. Um, there was an idea one of our staff members had to do a show for single Christians mm. and uh, called it The Boundless Show. And we had to get high level clearance to try this thing out right. because all audio was pretty heavily managed. Mm -hmm. But we snuck it under the radar, got approved, and um, I'm not sure that upper management ever really listened to it <laughs> until it was too late. <laughs> Perfect. Because <laughs> it, right. it was a little bit off brand, not yeah. totally mm -hmm. on point. And you know, singles need, they don't want corporate, they want irreverent, yeah. uh, authentic. And that's what we delivered. Yeah. And we're still delivering it through that show, The Boundless Show. Wow. And uh, since then, we've just seen the, the beauty of the mechanism of the channel mm -hmm. and the creative possibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, Rob's team has done a lot of work on creating new shows. And they're not all successes internally, but everything we release eventually is a success externally. It gets there. That's yeah. right. I mean, there's this, as you know, in, in when you're creating content, there's mm -hmm. lots of evolutions and iterations. Yep. before you finally get to, all right, this is it now. Yeah. And that's one of the things that has been so exciting because podcasting has a really low bar to entry, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Yes. And so you can try things yeah. and you can evaluate things. And if it doesn't really work, you can delete things. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, we haven't really had to do much of that. Yeah. But it's been really exciting because um, for terrestrial radio, which is where the majority of our outreach still is, yeah. um, there's costs associated with that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then there are challenges that the radio stations have to manage because they're time limited. They only have 24 yes. hours to work with. Yes. And so when we're coming up with another idea, it, it becomes a constraint. Mm -hmm. Well, where's it going to fit? So yep. the beauty of what podcasting offers is we're not limited by that. Mm -hmm. And we can then construct programming and content that is more tailored. Yeah. You know, if you think about it, the term broadcast means it's got to be reaching a broad mm -hmm. audience all the time. Yeah. But podcast has the benefit of being able to, as John was mentioning with Boundless, say, well, actually, we, we just want to talk to this group. Yes. Yes. I think podcasting has opened the door for more voices, which, you know, if you look at, let's say, like a high school or something, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking about before we went on air all the different trends in high school. Yeah. We know when we were in high school, what we wore and stuff. And if you look, there's little different groups of people mm -hmm. within high school, right? And podcast allows you to have a show just for them. Yeah. You know, and, and reach them in an intimate kind of way that they really find community. And that's what we've heard so much about for all the guests that we've had on being here at Spark Media. M majority of everybody has a show, and they all talk about their community. And even if it's a very small community, the, some of them have said, well, you know, my first show wasn't really great, so I canceled that one. I got rid of that one, and now I'm doing this. And they were like, I never realized that anybody even cared. Like I had like two listeners, I think, you know, and mm -hmm. then they were like, but those two listeners were like, hey, where you took this yeah. away from me. I love right. this, I lived by this. And that is something that is so great, I think about podcasting. It allows you to build multiple different communities and, and really have a good interactive relationship community there. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge though too, because uh, you know, I mentioned in the radio context, you have the reach of your station, and so you target building a community within that mm -hmm. reach. 
in the podcasting environment, you have a listener in Maine and a listener in San Diego, and how do you connect them? Yeah. And social media platforms have helped with mm -hmm. all of that, but social media comes with its own baggage. Sure. So finding ways for podcasters to be able to connect with their listeners and can let their listeners connect to each other as well is that's what's really exciting mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's what's still so new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fostering community, one of the things we've asked pretty much everybody here that set in, okay, we start out with Spark Media, and it's like, okay, right. what has been your, your best experience here at Spark Media? You know, what have you loved the most? What's been your takeaway? Things like that. And I would say the mass majority of people have said it's the community of people here yeah. that they've got to be in the room with, and they've got inspiration. They've been encouraged. They've got new ideas. They've heard great cutting-edge technology and things that would really help them grow their podcast but community and relational and the networking that's been here has just been so great mm -hmm. you know but I think that's the podcast world really fosters that you know I think it really fosters a community I think one of the reasons it does that is because um, back to the barrier to entry Everybody here has a story. Everybody I've mm. talked to has a story. Yeah. They're here because they have a story. They want to connect that story to other people. And in our world, we're hungry for that. Yeah. You know, we've, we've been isolated and polarized. And uh, back to the radio analogy, well, there are only so many jocks and so many talk show yeah. hosts out there that, that can actually fit into the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what happens through podcasting is if you have a story and a passion and you can contribute to somebody's improvement mm -hmm. or a, a, a shift in perspective it's attainable yeah you just need to find the right people around mm -hmm. you and get a get you know some basic equipment yep and do a pretty decent job of communicating your story it should work mm -hmm. yeah there's not yeah. a there's not a big budget there's not you know a team of suits that says well the ratings are down there's nothing none yeah. of this here it, it's here a platform for you to be able to speak from your heart yeah and that connects with people mm -hmm. Wha much of the word here has been being authentic, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and how we approach podcasting with your true authentic self, you know, and, and that's been great to hear people saying, you know, the imposter syndrome or how to, how to like not fall into that and how you really portray yourself authentically and mm -hmm. all of that. Like you said, it's, it's great. You can, it's, I tell people all the time, if you're going to start, it's just tape. Yeah. Like just do it again, right. you know, start again, find your way. And you know what? Most of us that started, none of us were like in love with the first episode, <laughs> right? So <laughs> you, it's just part of it. It's right. just part of the journey mm -hmm. and embrace it yeah. and, and step out and take the, take the chance because one person in this world probably needs the hope and truth that you're delivering, you know? And if that one person takes that truth and gives it to another and another, it would cause a ripple effect and that does change the world. So if we don't look at it like we're really trying to reach the entire world, but we are trying to reach the one that God's called us to reach, now we'll eventually have an imprint on the world. Well, and isn't that what spark is about? Yeah. It only takes a spark. Yes. I remember when Misty contacted me as she was responding to God's call to start all of this, and mm -hmm. it was really exciting for us at Focus on the Family to be participating with mm -hmm. all of that. We've been with her from the start with yeah. all of that, and just to see how... God has used the spark conglomerate, if you will, because it's a multifaceted mm -hmm. uh, yeah. aspect of everything that Misty's been called to be a part of. And the energy that's here, it's really refreshing. Yes. And for us to be able to come here, because we've kind of learned a few things over the years. Focus yeah. has been around for a while. And to be able to share that mm -hmm. knowledge and yeah. uh, offer that encouragement, it's really refreshing to be here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know that um, she has just been working so hard that she has paid attention to every detail. Yeah. Her and Peter's kindness has fostered an environment that has led to a lot of the things that we've talked about here, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that's bred the community, that's bred the networking, that's brought in experts in the industry so that others have the opportunity to glean from your expertise and other people's experiences that are leaders in the industry and um, the willingness to collaborate, the willingness to work together. Uh, I, I just can't thank them enough for staying true to their call mm -hmm. 
and answering the call and and being that labor right yeah. the labor yeah. that labors for the harvest mm -hmm. you know and, and and i think we have definitely seen a harvest come from here and it's just the beginning you yeah. think about it the mm -hmm. way podcasting even though you know we've been doing it since 2006 it's still very new yeah and it's it's a tremendous opportunity for us as believers to be in this field mm -hmm. and not let the energy of the secular world um, shut us out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I got two questions off that. Um, are y'all really looking at a lot more towards video podcasting, or no, we're fundamentally opposed to video. <laughs> <laughs> As primarily radio, <laughs> yes. When you say video, we our skin crawls. No, I'm yep. kidding. We we absolutely see the trends. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we we've got kids. Yeah. I've got a 20 year old. All he does all day long is send me links to YouTube videos. He, I mean, I yeah. try to get him to listen to things. He wants to see it or have it running in the background. Yes. And so I think it's inevitable that we have to have. Mm -hmm. Video. It doesn't mean we have video of the whole show, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It might mean that we have ancillary video. And if you look at some of the most popular TikToks out there, well, they're not necessarily even original video primarily. There's just, yeah. you know, B-roll and mm -hmm. graphics and, mm -hmm. uh, and different reactions from people. So yeah. we're aware of those trends. Um, we have some red tape to cut through to get there effectively. Right as yeah. a larger organization. So encouragement to those smaller scale operations, be yes. nimble as yes. you can and embrace video. Mm -hmm. What do you think? So we're doing a talk on that actually mm. um, coming up about audio and video. Mm -hmm. And so my, my opinion on it is one, audio should always lead because the audio must be mm -hmm. very, very good. Standalone. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, and, it, and it's an add on to do video. Yeah. So it's a beneficial tool to market the show, to draw in more audience and maybe a different audience than you would have had just in audio. Right. right. Um, the amount of content that you get from doing video is huge. So now you have marketing material for days to use. Um, so I think it is a great add on. How you do that and to what level you do that um that's what we talk on you know uh Amber, I'm, I'm so excited to hear you describe it that way because we haven't met before yeah. but you have a video production studio yep and so i wondered how you were going to respond to that question because we've encountered enough people out there who are trying to promote their video operation and they would leave a lot of podcasters thinking that if they don't have video they shouldn't start and so you, you have just validated a lot, and I really appreciate mm -hmm. that because the, it is the power of the spoken word yes. first. Yes. But the value of video is also valuable. We yes. can't just we can't disconnect the two. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at ways to blend the two mm -hmm. and utilize them. And sure, you can do a full video production of your podcast, and that's great. Yeah. But if you're not there yet, it doesn't mean you can't start. Yes. Not not everybody is um, Joe Rogan. Right. They can't pull off, yes. you know, a three-plus-hour show every day with video production. Yeah. Yes. Most yes. of us, though, if you, if you have a, a mic and some basic equipment, you can pull off audio fairly easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and to Rob's point, yeah, the power of the spoken word mm -hmm. gets in people's head. It allows me to listen to things while I drive. Mm -hmm. I try yep. not to watch too much while I drive. Right. Um, <laughs> and so I think, I think there's a lot of multitasking that goes on in yeah. with audio, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm because mm -hmm. we can actually be with people a little more consistently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the pandemic really pushed us quicker into that mm -hmm. because, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I know me, I am on Zoom calls still regularly. Well, yeah. a lot of my business is all over the world. Mm -hmm. So um, that leads to having to do those a lot. But um, being able to see somebody, it's almost like now I don't want to do a regular phone call. Like I need to see what, how we're saying this, like how we're communicating this, because I maybe didn't meet you in person, I don't really know you that well, and you don't know me very well, and so if I can see you, and I can see that you're smiling, I can see that everything's okay in the conversation yeah. that we're having, it really works. Yes. Um, now, not every conversation has to be that way though, right? Like after you've known each other for a while, or after you've done, you can go to just having an audio phone call or different things like that. 
So I think there's a time and a place for video, mm -hmm. and I think there's a time and a place for audio. Well, sure, and you mentioned the marketing. That's the introduction to yeah. the show. That's, um, that's how you're going to be able to establish in the listener's mind who, who is it that's hosting this show mm -hmm. or who's on this show and what, what are their idiosyncrasies. I'll raise my hand because I have right. idiosyncrasies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are those things that are happening when I'm talking that yeah. convey through video only Yep. But give extra contours, so mm -hmm. that marketing element is huge. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as you said, um, I, th I think a lot of folks aren't thinking through video as marketing. Mm. They're looking at it, it's got to be content. Hey, mm. I don't think so. No, it's so much marketing. I mean, and, you know, I've had a couple of podcasters and shows that have been like, they've watched our show and they see all of our reels. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I need to do that. And I'm like, well, that's a reel from our show. We have like... A bajillion reels off of one show yeah I mean now you're dropping that content constantly from one show mm -hmm. much like you would do the sound bites mm -hmm. but now we've got bloopers and we've got all these other visual things that catch the eye to pull into the show mm -hmm. as a marketing tool right. you know that's been really great to use and cut up but I can say I don't think every show lends to video yeah. I mean, there's some shows that are, they're great audio. They're just, they are great there. They live there. It's all we really need. And then there are some shows that you could take an ad video that yeah. could just take it really to the next level. Yeah. And it's really learning which one of those and masterminding like, hey, how does this add value and, and how does this grow this particular show? So people so. could actually contact you and you could walk them through that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of what we do. We've just had a couple of shows start, and you know, I'm. I think honesty is probably one of the first things you should approach everything with. Yeah. Um, and so I'm very honest with people with saying, even though I'm a production studio and I would love to produce something for you, um, I'll be the first to tell you I don't know that's the best route for your show. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I think you should start here and, mm -hmm. and try it here and see where you get. And then there's others that I'm like, oh no, this is great. Like. We need to see this. Like <laughs> yes. the world's gonna just yeah. eat this up. You know, right. this is as a creator, you know those yes. moments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so you see those things, and, and and you see that spark of brilliance. And you know, for me as a believer, I I see the God-given talent, and you try to put that God-given talent in the right lane. You know, there's a bunch of lanes we've got out here in this world, mm -hmm. and it's finding the right lane. You know, I mean, there's certain shows. I have a lot of believers that come to me that are trying to decipher if they're secular. Are they Christian? And, you know, and some shows I'm like, you're definitely Christian. <laughs> like, you are so deep in the word right. that, you know, this audience can track with you and they're going to love it mm -hmm. and they're going to be fire, fire. You know, I mean, they're going to be right there with you in it. And this world over here is going to be like, what did they say? I don't even know those terms. I don't know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know. And then there's other stories <laughs> that, um, really hit maybe a broader audience because of the delivery in which they choose to deliver that that could not fit over here so it's they're both relevant they're both need to be said in the way that they're saying them because god packaged them that way it's just helping them find the right home you know the right i, I like the way you described that helping them find their lane with yeah. all of that because people's gifts and talents are all over the place mm -hmm. with that i mean we have as we review program suggestions, there's often times where we say, this person is best in print. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Because That's they do right. a really good job that way. Yes. And they're not helping convey their message very well yep. if they're in the pressure of a studio environment mm -hmm. or even if they're up on stage presenting in front yep. of an audience because they're not comfortable there. But yep. as a writer, you read their what they've mm -hmm. written and mm -hmm. you're just drawn in. Yes, yes. It's in the movie world. I sit on a lot of um, pitch panels, mm -hmm. so you know, pitching mm -hmm. everything, right? And <laughs> some of the tips that I give right away, I'm like, you're a brilliant writer, but let me give you some tips on pitching. Hire somebody to pitch your show. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not sure what I just watched. Is it a, is it a movie, an episode, a, a, a podcast show? What, like, what did you just, I don't even know what you pitched me. It was, yeah. a, it was a story yeah. that was great but I'm not sure where, what box to put that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't even hear half the story because in my systematic mind, I'm trying to fit it in the right box when you I've started. I've been distracted. Yeah. 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 I can't figure out what it yeah, is. I don't. And I'm sp in spending time uh -huh. doing that rather than connecting with what you're saying. Yes. Right. Yes. And so I can 
I, it took me a while to figure out how to articulate how everybody's lanes work. And then you're not, they're not being discouraging to somebody when you say, ah, this isn't working. You're saying, no, let me help you find what works best for you. Mm -hmm. And let me encourage you and let you thrive there. And then you need to just pull some other. That's why this is so great. I say the media industry is a lot, is, is a really great picture of the body of Christ. Because yeah. it takes such collaborations to pull something off of everybody doing their God-given gift talent to make something look very well done mm -hmm. in this industry. Mm -hmm. it, you cannot do it by yourself. It takes, I mean, you know, I say on my show all the time, I'll say thank you to the whole crew because there's like 10 people that made us look really great yeah. today, yeah. you know. And with if one's gone, there's a hole, maybe the lighting's not great, maybe the camera's moved, mm -hmm. maybe the props aren't right, maybe the sound isn't as good. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody is touching something that's an expert in that to make it that great. That's how the body of Christ was meant to be. We were not meant to be the whole body. Mm -hmm. We were meant to be a piece of the body of Christ, all functioning at our highest potential to create excellence. And so I, I think um, helping people find that is uh, just a just a dear to my heart. I, I, I love mm -hmm. it, and that's what we try to do at the studio is people come in and stuff like that. So, well, guys, I cannot thank you enough for sitting with me today and visiting and sharing, and thanks for all your support in the industry as a whole, not just at Spark Media, but in the industry as a whole. I know your programs have changed so many lives and given hope to so many people mm -hmm. and I am just thankful truly thankful for all your hard work and dedication that y'all put into focus on the family well we're grateful for the invitation and we share your enthusiasm about the impact mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for eternal impact we're using the tools of the day to reach out and touch people through story and through resources and help uh, if that's our motivation and not our ego and not <laughs> you know some number that we're chasing or self-validation mm -hmm. if we're looking at the impact it goes back to something you reference amber uh, that, that passage in second corinthians one where paul says we've received comfort we've passed that on to you now you go do that yeah. and that's a ripple yes. of kingdom impact so yes. thank you for your faithfulness mm -hmm. and yeah. thanks for the invite yeah, yeah thank absolutely. you absolutely absolutely well it's been great thanks for the talk yeah well, thanks for the invitation absolutely enjoy it uh-huh.